Today, I'll be going over all the tools that you need to assemble a guitar and the ones you don't. So stick around. Hey everybody, it's Aaron at Warmoth. And as you can imagine, I have built lots and lots and lots of guitars. And I've also had the chance to talk to lots and lots of people who enjoy building guitars like I do. And also a lot of people who would like to build a guitar, but they feel intimidated by the amount of tools they're gonna have to buy or the skill they think they need. And today's video is kind of to dispel that myth a little bit. I'm gonna talk about these tools um, and I kind of compare it to photography. If you get into photography, there's a never ending amount of stuff you can buy. Um, you know, more camera bodies, more lenses, more tripods and camera bags and software. And you can pretty much spend as much money as you have um, getting all the stuff that you think you need. Uh, but the truth is that you can take a pretty good picture on a basic camera. And it's kind of the same way as you get into guitar building. There are different levels you can go to that require more and more specialized tools. Uh, I kind of think of it as three layers. You have assembly, you have setup, and then you have, I guess, I would call it luthier level uh, tools. And I'm gonna go through each one of those and describe the tools that I use for those things. Um, and just this last week, I built a guitar on this bench. And as I did it, I wrote down every tool that I used along the way. So I'm gonna refer to my list here and go through each one. And you'll see that this first uh, level, the assembly level, most of the tools are general tools that people are going to have around their house. There are a few specialized ones, but most of them are just everyday things. So the first tool that I used uh, building the guitar was this bench. This workbench right here, you can kind of see it under there. Nothing special. It's just a, it's just a workbench that I bought at Lowe's, I think, for about 99 bucks. But if you don't want to uh, buy a bench specifically for working on guitars, you can do it on your dining room table. Uh, the second tool that I used was this pad, this gray pad that you see here. And it is um, a Neotech Optech USA, you know, general purpose padded work pad that I got on Amazon for like 20 bucks. If you don't want to buy one of those, you can just use a bathroom towel on your dining room table. You just need some kind of padded surface to work on. Uh, the next couple of tools that I use a lot are tape. I use masking tape anytime that I want to tape something over and then write on it, like if I'm going to mark where I want to drill a screw, or if I just want to mask something so I don't scuff it while I'm working on it, I use painter's tape. Um, most people are going to have that around their house. Uh, on the guitar that I just built, I had to put ferrules on the back, and for that I use this little fret hammer. I got this from Stumac, uh, and it's just, it's got a, a brass um, ping, is that what those are called, on one side, and plastic on the other. If you don't have one like this, any, any hammer with a nylon or plastic uh, striking edge, or if all you have at home is a claw hammer, you can put something in between the ferrules and the hammer and just lightly tap, put a towel in between there or something, and it will, it will work just fine. Uh, and of course, not all guitars are gonna need ferrules. It just, the, the, the tools you're gonna use depend a little bit on what you're putting together. Um, but yeah, a fret hammer. Uh, an electric drill. This, if you're gonna splurge on any one tool, it would be an electric drill. These, I use this nonstop, constantly, and even if you don't build guitars, it's just basically a, a, a tool of life that you need around your, your house. Um, you can get something like this for maybe a hundred bucks, 120 bucks, um, and it will pay for itself and then some. Uh, and then of course, to go with that, I've got my Altoids tin full of various drill bits um, that I keep right there. Uh, and then to go with that, I have this punch or an awl. If you, uh, uh, you, I use a punch or an awl to 
uh, when I'm getting ready to drill, especially on a finished surface, I don't want that drill bit to wander when I start to drill. So I just give it a little punch so that there's a little dimple right there that the, the drill can stick in. And, and so I make sure I drill exactly where I want to. Um, and then following that, I use a chamfer bit. Once you've drilled a hole, you want to chamfer the edge a little bit so it's kind of back beveled so that when you drive a screw into it, it doesn't crack the paint. And for that, I use this little chamfer bit. And this is a very specialized thing. I got this from Stumac, and I don't know if these exist anywhere else. And it's a little bit expensive. It was uh, like 35 bucks or something like that. Um, but I use it repeatedly on every single build. So it's worth it to me. If you have some other solution, uh, maybe you can find a, a less expensive way to do it, but that's what I use. Um, and then you have to lubricate screws. You can use like screw wax. I uh, Last time I used Slipstick, which is from Wilkinson, and it's made to like lubricate saddles and string trees and, and string nuts and that kind of stuff, but I just use it to lubricate the screws too. Uh, in a pinch, you can just use a bar of soap. You can even use like a Johnny ring that you used when you mount a toilet. Uh, you just need some kind of wax to lubricate the screw. Uh, digital calipers. I have this set of digital calipers and these can be maybe a little expensive, but I bet you if you go to someplace like Harbor Freight, they're not that much. Uh, I use this all the time when I'm measuring a screw diameter and a drill bit diameter to make sure that I am getting the right size drill bit. Um, I, I have deep well sockets. Uh, a set of a few of those with a screwdriver handle so that I, you know, I don't want a, a socket wrench because uh, you don't need that kind of torque when you're assembling a guitar. Um, but I have the deep well sockets and I, I use two the most. A half inch is what I use to like tighten the nuts on volume and tone pots or the, uh, the output jack. And then I use a 10 millimeter one often on tuner bushings. Um, but of course, the, what, the dimension you're going to need it will depend on the hardware you have. Uh, but the principle is the same. This just makes it real easy to get after those things. Um, a soldering iron, of course. I have this soldering station here. It's a Weller soldering station. And I would imagine it's probably a hundred bucks-ish. And this is a little bit more specialized. But if you build guitars at all, it's worth having one of these. You'll use it all the time. Uh, and then some things that go along with it are, of course, solder and solder removal braid um, and a digital multimeter. I, I don't use this very often, but when you're trying to troubleshoot, it's very handy. If you want to see the resistance of pickups or pots or whatever, it comes in very handy. Um, and again, not very expensive. Uh, you can probably get that for 30 bucks at a hardware store. Um, let's see. Oh, a string winder. If you're like me, you got about 740 of these laying around your house. I use that constantly. Uh, this tool I refer to as a knob popper offer thingy. I have no idea what it's actually called, but it came from Music Nomad. And basically what it is, it's got a fork on each end that's kind of back angled so that you can slip it under a volume knob and pop it off. Um, it comes in very handy for that. And then also the the fork has like serrated edges and you use that to tighten those little nuts that come on like three-way toggle switches and they have that little nut that spins and it's not it's not like a, a hex nut or anything. It's just like a, a nut with teeth on it. And you can use this fork to tighten that without uh, marking up the surface of your guitar. So Super cheap, but super, super handy and indispensable when you really need to get a knob off. Uh, let's see. Other things that I use are like needle nose pliers or little tiny side cutters. A lot of people will have these just around. If you don't have them, you can pick these up at Harbor Freight for like literally five bucks each. Um, oh, and I forgot neck rest. This neck rest come from, comes from Stumac. 
Uh, and if you have a, a guitar with a tilt back headstock or something, you absolutely need one of these. If you're building a, a guitar with a straight headstock, you don't need it as much, but it's still nice to have. Like I said, this one comes from Stumac. I, if I had to buy it again, I wouldn't get this one. I don't like it. It's, it's kind of tippy. Uh, I think Music Nomad makes one that's blue, like blue plastic with kind of a wider tapered base. So it's a little bit more stable, um, but you'll need one of those. Some people just use like, uh, I've seen people use like these beanbag things or just a rolled up towel. So any of that will work. Just something to support your neck. And uh, I think that's about it for assembly tools. And you can see, like I said, most of those things are just household items. Oh, I forgot one, a screwdriver. <laughs> Use a screwdriver constantly. Uh, this is just a regular old run of the mill screwdriver. And then uh, I have a mini screwdriver set because a lot of the uh, screws that you drive when you're assembling a guitar are very small. So I have a mini screwdriver set. And now let's talk about tools for setup. And you're going to find that these tools are more specialized. They're more specific to uh, the guitar world. Um, and you'll have to buy them a lot of times from Warmoth or Stumac or Music Nomad or other places like that. Um, but none of them, again, are crazy expensive. Uh, the first tool that I probably use the most when doing setups are Allen wrenches. And I don't know, it, but if you're like me, I think I have, at last count, I have 7,984 Allen wrenches in my house because everything I buy in my life comes with one. Um, and I just keep this little Altoids box here full of the ones most common for guitar. And you'll use these when you're adjusting saddle heights that kind of thing. Another thing that you'll use all the time is a screwdriver. Depending on the kind of bridge you have, you might use the screwdriver to move the saddles back and forth. Um, maybe some mini screwdrivers to do that. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, a capo. I don't have my capo with me, but I use a capo a lot to hold strings down when I'm measuring various things. Rather than having to do it manually, I just put a capo on there. It makes it easier. Um, Let's see. Oh, radius gauges. These are, I keep them in a sandwich bag. These are a handy little gizmo. I got these from Stumac. You slip them under the strings and they have a radius along this bottom edge and the top edge and you can just set your radius. Use it as a guide to set the radius when you're adjusting the saddles. I use these for pretty much every setup. Uh, another thing that comes in handy a lot of times is a fret rocker. This one's also from Stumac. And basically you set this down, it has all these different surfaces, and you pick whichever surface you need to span three frets. Uh, and then you rock it. And if the fret in the center is higher than the two on the outside, you'll feel it rock just a little bit. Now I would caution you with this, that just because you can feel a tiny rock but it, across a span of frets doesn't mean you need to do anything about it. I don't think I've ever found a guitar where every single thing all the way down was perfect. Um, so it, it's a good thing to, you know, get a quick indication, but if you don't experience any problems while you're playing, don't worry about it. Uh, I, I use this, I use this rarely, usually to verify something that I've already sensed during a play test. Like I play it and I'm like, I feel like something's going on here. And then I use this to verify it. Um, feeler gauges and a, a straight edge come in handy sometimes. I don't use these a lot. I mean, honestly, if I didn't have these, it probably wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, I, when I do my setups, I don't measure, I don't get into measuring dimensions and stuff. I just do it by feel for the straight edge. I use the string itself. I hold it down on the frets of either end of the neck and use the string. And, uh, I just find that way easier and more intuitive. You know, all the dimensions really don't matter when the guitar doesn't feel right. So I, I do setups by feel, um, at another level. And this is when you start getting a really specialized is cutting a nut. And so these, these, I don't even know how to pronounce this. Uochiku, Uochiku files made by Hiroshima. These are available at Warmoth and these are for cutting nut slots and they work fantastic. Uh, this set of 
seven, eight. This set of eight is 99 bucks, I think. You can also get a set for base that has seven files in it that's a, a little less, 90 bucks or something. Um, these come in uh, very valuable all the time. They're, you know, you've got to have the nut slot heights right if you want your guitar to feel right. And I use these quite often. And finally, we arrive at the luthier level tools. And this is where you're gonna get into the big, expensive, specialized tools. Mostly files, I would say. Um, for example, here are uh, a set of fret crowning files uh, that is available at Warmoth. These are, again, the uh, Uo Chiku Hiroshima files. They're fantastic. They're about, for a set of three, I think they're about a hundred bucks. Um, you know, if you're, if you're gonna do, start doing your own fret work or anything that involves files, uh, you're, you're often spending a, a decent amount of money for good quality files. Um, you're gonna get into things like all kinds of, all kinds of pliers, like fret pullers, uh, side cutters, you know, fret nippers, all that kind of stuff. You're gonna get into jigs uh, to set necks, you're, this is where you can spend a lot of money. Um, what else did I think of? Clamps, glues, jigs, all kinds of stuff that are very specialized for guitar building. Um, but again, if all you're going to do is assemble a guitar from parts, you don't need that stuff. Uh, you, you really don't need a lot of setup tools either, um, specialized setup tools. I mean, you're already going to have a screwdriver, so... Um, the, the point is to assemble a guitar, you don't need a crazy uh, amount of expensive tools. Most of the stuff is just common household stuff. Uh, hopefully you found that beneficial. This is what my workbench looks like most of the time. Uh, I, I usually have it pushed up against the wall, but I brought it out into the middle of the room and rearranged it just like uh, I normally have it so you can see the array of tools. I mean, it's a little cluttered right now because I have every possible tool sitting on it, but it usually looks something like this. I've got my reading glasses because my eyes aren't what they used to be. Um, oh, a little can of air. Use that quite often. And then uh, guitar, guitar polish, uh, fretboard oil. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Hopefully you found this useful. Uh, the point that I wanted to make is that if you just want to assemble a guitar, you don't need expensive specialized tools. Most of the things you use to assemble a guitar are household tools that you may already have with just a few specialized things that aren't that expensive. If you want to go on to do your own setups, if you want to go on to do more advanced luthery, then you're, of course you're going to need more expensive and more specialized tools. Uh, if you have any questions about this stuff, especially the... Uh, the fret crowning files or the nut slot files that Warmoth sells, make sure to go to the Warmoth website or give our customer service reps a call. And until next time, keep on picking.